Darth Vader stood before Coda and Windu. He felt a great sense of pride in his accomplishment in capturing his prey, yet he also felt a raging inferno deep inside the recesses of his mind. These Jedi scum before him had dared to defy the Empire, and in doing so, defied his very being. Anakin, we know it's you in there. There was good in you once upon a time, but clearly, that's gone. Your reign of tyranny is a disgusting symbol of villainy in the galaxy. But know this, you will get what's coming to you. You will be destroyed one day, and all those whom you hurt, Padme, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, they will get their vengeance. Vader's inferno of hate grew. He turned and walked away, leaving his guards to deal with the Jedi. Boba stood with armed clone trooper guards that were transporting him to Rico's Brigade prison. He had been over the recent events in his head over and over again, replaying his mistakes, allowing his anger to grow bit by bit. But suddenly, he felt a tinge, as if something in the galaxy was telling him that someone was now missing. Something had been taken away from the living world, a source of great hate for him. Could it be? Windu was dead? He didn't believe in being superstitious, but this felt so real. He believed it. A weight was lifted from him. The years of hatred, gone. Had it all been a waste? He still felt a hole in his heart from the loss of his father. Perhaps it would never go away, despite his best efforts. Tucker felt raw. He had just ran from his master in mortal danger. He was a disgrace. Yet he felt anger too. Anger and hate, beginning to fester. Revenge. That was the word that kept coming to mind. He tried to brush it off. It wasn't the Jedi way. But it came crawling back every few minutes. He, Blitzer, and Schlieffen, along with a few clone troopers, had made it onto a moon's surface from the transport ship that they had just jettisoned. Once again, the group found themselves in a difficult journey before them. Commander Rico held an emergency council meeting with Flak, Rex, Wolf, 55, Phantom, and Aqua. He was livid at the current situation, but trying to keep his composure. Gentlemen, how did we manage to get blindsided like this? Not only is our expedition to find chaos nearly destroyed, but now we have a new droid army getting built right under our noses? Sir, we never could have anticipated this happening, Flak insisted. It doesn't matter, Rico snapped. We need to get our act together. We need a victory. I mean, sir, we don't really have the proper capacity to defeat either the droid army or Chaos's army at the moment, and the Empire is hard stuck in right now. I don't care. Which Legion has the most men right now? Commander 55, sir. Very well then. The 501st under 55 in Glasden will go and launch an assault on... Let's say Biss. Actually, yeah, Biss. Then we will have a direct line on Coruscant. Sir, this seems rash. This is the plan. Assemble a clone horde. Launch them at the defenses. We've tried the alternatives. We need a victory. We will overwhelm the enemy with numbers. So it was decided. Commander 55 gathered as many men as he possibly could of the 501st Legion with Glasden, and they prepared for an attack on Biss. Yo, what's going on gamers? It's me, Daily Tactics here, back with some more Star Wars Rico's Brigade. And in today's episode, we have a 501st Clone Trooper Legion Horde. 55 and Glasden have been ordered by Rico to simply attack. No strategy, just send as many units forward as possible. Rico is looking for a quick and dirty victory here. He doesn't want to be messing around. He doesn't want a long siege. He just wants Biss captured as fast as possible. So the 501st here has gathered in horde form. They have a couple of TX-130Ts. They have uh, a couple of these ATXTs as well. Uh, and they're going to be going after a pretty hard stuck stormtrooper position. The stormtroopers are all infested inside this little city. It's very Earth-like, um, but they do have some of these uh, ATSTs. They actually have a lot of these. They have like 
four or five ATSTs, I would say, and a whole bunch of E-Web turrets. I mean, it's a pretty quick and dirty defense, but needless to say, Rico's strategy with lack of strategy actually helps out a little bit because the defenders just don't see it coming in the slightest so they have weaker defenses but they still have a lot of defenses i mean there are so many troopers infested within this little uh city area here but there are going to be so many clone troopers attacking so it's basically just two masses of forces bam clapping each other it's gonna be insane either way guys i hope you enjoyed this episode of rico's brigade be sure to hit the like button if you did enjoy it can we get an f in chat for windu and coda it's big sad it's big sad uh comment down below what you liked about the episode uh and if you're excited to see the next one and subscribe if you haven't already because uh subscribing helps out the channel a ton either way guys let's get right on into it here Alrighty then, fellas, we're going to press start, but go in slow-mo for the first bit here, because this is going to be a bombastic battle, and here we go, already shots getting fired from this ATXT, tons and tons of Imperial fire coming on in and colliding with the Clone Trooper Horde here, the Clone Trooper Horde not taking too many losses yet, they are sort of in this little divot on the side of the road, which is helping them out, you know, it's providing a little bit of cover, but I am seeing some 501st Troopers now begin to go down as the fire really really ramps up here already ATST in the back here going down I mean these things don't have the best armor but the cannons equipped to them hot dang do those do some damage so maybe the other ones will be able to get some more kills than that one because that one died almost immediately either way we do have a small imperial factory right here that is immediately under assault the stormtroopers inside are defending to the best of their ability they do have a lot of troopers in here with some pretty good guns they have e11 arcs e11 carabines and e11 shotguns which are three extraordinarily powerful variants of the e11s and then of course they have standard e11s which are much less good <laughs> standard e11s are are not nearly as good as uh those variants but you know they do have to have some just to fill out the lines i i have a feeling that the standard e11 is just cheap compared to the other ones the gate just swung open on its own huh i wonder if they shot the lock or something and that led to it swinging open that's so funny i don't think i've ever seen that happen in men of war before that's actually crazy. I, I like that. That's a cool feature. Um, either way, yeah, the factory is under some pretty intense fire. The building behind the uh, stormtroopers here is getting absolutely shredded, and the walls of the factory are taking a bit of a beating too, but they're still holding out pretty nicely. They're getting a few 501st trooper kills here. The horde is taking some losses, but they do have some nice cover here, so that is definitely helpful uh, in their little crusade. Love to see it. <laughs> love to see it indeed over on the left side uh these clone troopers have this nice little hill that allows them to get the high ground on their enemy here obi-wan would be so proud so they are firing downwards in fact they're using rockets to fire downwards probably pretty intimidating to be defending against rockets just flying at you from the skies that would be quite terrifying quite quite terrifying um we can see that glasden is here yeah there he is there's actually glasden and uh, 55 fighting together 55 with his classic dc 15x let's see if he's got any kills with it one kill all right nowhere near the 55 he got on the one mission that gave him his namesake but hey He's helping out. He's getting kills. That's all we can ask for from a leader right now. You know, he's a, he's one of those leaders that fights on the front lines, baby. Fights, boosts morale, and he gets the job done. He is a skilled warrior, too. It's uh, he's quite a rarity in terms of a commander, you know? He's kind of a pro. He's an alpha chad. Oh my goodness, the losses over here down the middle are pretty extreme for the 501st right now. That is not a good look, dude. They have taken some considerable losses straight down the middle. The left side's doing a lot better, uh, and over here is doing okay right now. But, whew, over here, I guess it's more the right side than the middle. They are taking some extreme losses, and this is where they have, like, the most tanks all lined up, too. Not a good look, guys. Not a good look for Rico's Brigade right now. It's tough out here. It is tough out here. All right, the left side, uh, we see the 501st is really piling it on. Actually, let's go into normal speed now. I think that's enough slow-mo. That's enough. Enough of that. Oh, we have uh, another down ATST over here. There was, like, another over this way, right? Where's that other one? Oh, it blew up right here. Okay, we have another down one right there. Oh, 
this one's doing the head jig. Whenever they start doing the jig, it actually causes lag. It's a weird glitch in the game. We have another ATST right here, and then there's one in the way, way back. So two ATSTs still remain alive, um, which is not a lot considering they started with like five. Uh, but they still have some E-Web turrets alive too, and they've got plenty of uh, infantry. So I think we're going to see still a pretty good, solid Stormtrooper resistance here. Oh, but we actually have uh, TX-130T just blitzing on forward. That's going to disrupt the defense a good bit. I mean, now's a good time actually. Yeah, just wreak havoc on the defensive lines with the TX-130Ts. Almost use a Blitzkrieg method. It doesn't matter if the TX-130T goes down because it will like disrupt so much of the fire. It will destroy so many of the buildings and cover that the defenders are able to use I think that's actually a pro strat you know blitzkrieg but this uh, this thing's just now spinning in circles we circles yay <laughs> I love circles lovely 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 uh, the right side is finally recovering a little bit and they're going through a bit of a graveyard area over here taking out an e-web turret back there taking out some infantry as well another e-web turret way back there going down too some more infantry back here. The middle sort of plaza area with the water fountain, I think, is going to be a pretty tough spot to attack since there's so many stormtroopers lining the walls and things like that in these, like, little choke point-ish areas. You know, in order to get up here, the uh, clones have to go up the stairs and stuff like that. So I think it will be a little bit tough uh, for the clones to attack in these areas. But we'll just have to wait and see, baby. Wait and see. Oh, it looks like one of the ATXTs back here actually did end up going down. And the TX-130T is <laughs> on fire and its sirens are going. So that thing is like one bazooka shot away from complete and utter destruction. Is this ATST dead? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's got no crew in it. I guess the crews got destroyed by some rocket or something like that. Oh, one second, guys. Sorry about that, boys. My dog Wallive wanted to have to go out. Wanted to have to go out. What am I saying? That makes no sense. Either way, the 501st are about halfway through the battle map right now. We even got Glasden up here leading the charge up these stairs with other 501st troopers. He's staying alive. Most of these guys are staying alive. I'm seeing minimal 501st losses in the second half of this map compared to the first half where they pretty much got shredded. You know, the first half of the map was real bad for these boys, but now they're cruising. They found their groove. They're managing to get some good licks in here. We got a machine gunner over here along with a couple of E-11 Riflemen for the stormtroopers firing away holding this nice little alleyway here I knew that this uh, part of the map would definitely be a pretty good defensive area once they got up here And this is definitely proving me right here as these guys are managing to knock out a whole bunch of 501st clone troopers that dare to attack them like this but the 501st are getting closer and closer. They do manage to take out that machine gunner there. And now all that's left is an E-11 Rifleman. But there are more troopers up here at the Water Fountain as well. They're managing to hold out pretty nicely, getting a few kills there. And there's actually even more over this way, too. So plenty of stormtroopers left alive on uh, this little... I don't know, what do you call this? Plateau kind of a thing? I guess? I, I don't know. <laughs> Some sort of a thing. Raised area. Um... And yeah, they're fighting away pretty nicely. Uh, back in the back lines, we still have uh, an ATSD. Yes, we do. Still live. I'm sure it'll start firing probably when the clones get to about this range. This is the one that's been decrewed, so that one is out of commission still. Are there any like big clone vehicles left alive? There is one TX-130 T over here. It's not really doing all that much. Oh, there's an ATXT there too. Oh, and there's another TX-130 T over here, but very on fire and almost dead. So. Be interesting to see if the ATST actually manages to take out this TX-132. That'd be interesting. Um, these two E-Web turrets back here both end up biting the dust. Uh, this one way back here ends up biting the dust as well. Oh, ATST is taking some pot shots at that TX-130T. I wonder if it will find its mark. Oh, it does end up blowing up, and I don't think it hit a single shot on that TX-130T. Pretty sure it only needed to get one hit, and it just didn't manage to. I'm actually going to delete the legs because they're starting to do the gyration, and the gyration lags the game. Uh, this E-Web turret here is in a pretty optimal spot to get some kills, except this... Uh, ATXT is rounding the corner and is likely going to spray it down with some explosive fire and wipe it out around the corner. Really, the stormtroopers, I feel like, were set up for a good anti infantry defense, and we've seen that pretty nicely here as they've wiped out a lot of the Rico's Brigade infantry that's come at them. However, in terms of uh, vehicles, you know, they don't really have any anti tank guns. 
Uh, they have bazookas, but you know those are small arms fire basically, and they can't exactly hit from a very far range. Uh, and their ATSTs are pretty much anti-infantry. I feel like ATSTs aren't really good against other tanks. They are very good against infantry, but that's about it. You know, they have a lot of explosive power, but not very hard-hitting or penetrating power, if you know what I mean. You feel with me? You vibing with me, boys? Either way, Rico's Brigade is crushing it now. Uh, they're still taking a few losses as they go, but they're managing to sort of blitz on forward. There's Glasden. Glasden's so easy to spot, to be honest. Oh, and there's 55 right there. 55, how many kills you got, boy? How many kills? Eight! That's pretty impressive, and Glasden's got none, but that's okay. He's only got DC-15C. Uh, the Clone Trooper Horde is coming into sort of the last stand area of the Empire over here. They are continuing their Blitzkrieg on forward. This whole strategy through having no strategy is honestly working out pretty well for him here. But, I mean, the problem with this is it'll only work once or twice before the Empire sort of catches on to what they're doing and they just lock down these areas. So this is a limited strategy that can only work in certain circumstances. And it's very risky, too. You know, there's no promising that the Empire doesn't just cut them down immediately. They got very lucky here, I feel like. I mean, in all honesty... I'm actually surprised that uh, Rico's Brigade did so well during this battle. I, I thought for sure they would take, you know, double the losses they have. And they've taken a lot of losses, don't get me wrong. Like, this is a, I wouldn't say Pyrrhic victory, but more of a close victory, if we're being completely honest. Like, they've lost probably a third of their force or something like that, which is considerable. And if they had strategized more in this assault, then they likely would have lost less. So. Uh, you know, it's a costly strategy, it works sometimes, uh, but you can only use it a few times before, you know, you sort of exhaust that option and, uh, need to actually start, you know, strategizing a little bit more <laughs> against your enemy, because your enemy will strategize against you. However, for this battle, it certainly has worked out quite nicely. I think the help of the tanks really was good, too. Uh, lots of these tanks managed to get a lot of kills, so that was very good. Sort of last stand moments here for the Stormtroopers. They're even getting flanked by this TX-130T. This is probably the end for them. Well, there goes one of them. He's sort of toying with the other ones here. Oh, there goes another one. <laughs> it's doing like a little twisty thing. <laughs> what are you doing? Weird tank. Oh, there you go. Those three did end up dying there pretty badly. Oh, we actually do have uh, two Stormtroopers over this way. No, three. Ooh, one has a kill. Yep, one has a kill. <laughs> Let's try and retreat them. Why not? They can go live to tell the tale of their uh, massive defeat here. But that's the end of the battle. Um, yellow are dead stormtroopers. Red are dead clones. I mean, the clones took considerable losses, but the majority of their losses were taken at the very beginning of the battle. And in the middle here, there was a lot of losses taken here. But at the very end, you know, actually, they did still take quite a number of losses. But, you know. They, they managed to cruise a little bit more. So, definitely a close victory because the clones lost so many troopers, but they definitely did win and have taken this area of the planet. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Rico's Brigade. I really hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to like the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace! I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content, and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.